I'll be at my parents' house for a while, to take care of my dad. But we're currently at your dad's funeral. What? At the funeral hall, the priest was just about to start the chanting. I was more exasperated than angry at my wife's completely clueless phone call, especially since I hadn't been able to reach her for a while. What do you mean? I mean, your dad has already passed away. No way! Even over the phone, I could tell she was visibly shaken. She didn't realize that the lie she had been telling, which might have worked if her father were still alive, was now completely useless. What on earth had she been doing? I was dumbfounded. My father-in-law, James, was my former boss and the person I trusted the most. He was not only diligent at work but also a very kind person in everyday life. It was through his introduction that I met my wife, Rosemary. Rosemary was a bit of a sheltered girl who didn't know much about the world, but when we first met, I found that endearing and married her. In the early days of our marriage, she worked hard at unfamiliar household chores and devoted herself to me. We were blessed with a son and had a happy family. However, as soon as our son graduated from college and started working, she completely abandoned all housework and started going out frequently. I thought it might be a reaction to raising our child, so I overlooked it. But then, my father-in-law collapsed. I'm worried about my mom being alone, so I've decided to help take care of my dad too. Since then, Rosemary stopped going out and instead started staying at her parents' house half of the week. I was very concerned about my father-in-law, but at that time, I was extremely busy with work and frequently traveling overseas. I couldn't even find time to call due to the time difference, and I felt guilty for leaving all the care responsibilities to Rosemary. I'm really sorry I can't do anything for your dad, even though he's done so much for me. It's okay. I'm really grateful that you care so much about my dad. Are you okay with the caregiving expenses? I can help out a bit if you need more. Thank you. My mom was a bit worried about it. That would really help. This is the least I can do. Then, can you give me $10,000 for now? What? That much? You just said you'd help with the money. Since we no longer had to pay for our son's education, I didn't mind providing the money, but I was surprised by the large amount she requested. Okay, but what do you need that much for? Didn't we renovate your parents' house to be barrier-free last year? Yes, but we need to buy a caregiving bed and other things. I see. At that time, I cashed out a fixed deposit and gave her $10,000. However, she kept asking for $1,000 or $2,000 more for caregiving expenses. Since I had offered to help, I felt reluctant to question her too much, but I was still concerned about the frequent large expenses. The average caregiving cost is $700 to $800 per month according to the internet, so what is she spending it on? I should have contacted her parents' house to ask, but I was too busy with work. I kept postponing it, thinking that by providing the money, I was also participating in the caregiving. One day, after returning from a week-long overseas business trip, I'm home. Oh? Was today the day you were coming back? I returned home a bit earlier than planned, and my wife rushed into the living room, out of breath. I thought you were at your parents' house taking care of your dad today, Rosemary. I have to come home sometimes. Or the housework piles up. Thanks for that. But what's going on? Your hair is messy, and you're sweating a lot. Were you doing a big cleaning? Yes, I thought I might as well rearrange the furniture. Then I'll help you. You just got back from a business trip and must be tired. Why don't you go to a nearby cafe and relax until I'm done cleaning? It's fine. I'll help. No, that's not necessary. Please, go out and take it easy. She insisted, 
So I went to a nearby cafe. But something felt off. Why can't she clean if I'm here? It felt like she didn't want me in the house. Could someone have been here? No way. I had a bad feeling. Hey, I got a call from my parents' house. They want me to come over today. Is that okay? Right now? As I was sipping my coffee and feeling uneasy, my wife called. Um, my mom threw out her back. She wants me to help take care of her. Threw out her back? When? A couple of days ago, but I didn't want to worry you while you were overseas. I see. But weren't you in the middle of a big cleaning? That's done. I need to hurry, so I'm sorry. Before I could say anything, she hung up. I rushed home to find the house empty. Despite her saying she was doing a big cleaning, there were no trash bags, and the house looked the same as before. I decided to call my mother-in-law, and her response was unexpected. Hello, actually. Michael, I'm glad I reached you. James is in critical condition. Come to the hospital right away. I hurried to the hospital she mentioned. If it's such a serious situation, why didn't Rosemary tell me? My suspicions about Rosemary grew even stronger. When I rushed to the hospital by taxi, my father-in-law had already passed away. I was shocked and tears welled up in my eyes as I couldn't be there for the final moments of someone who had been so good to me. I'm very sorry about James. I'm sure he was happy that you came. But Rosemary... To my surprise, Rosemary, who was supposed to be taking care of her father in place of her mother, was not at the hospital. I've been trying to contact her multiple times. But Rosemary was coming to take care of James every day, right? Rosemary? She hardly ever came. What? But she stayed over at your house many times and I gave her a lot of money for caregiving expenses. What are you talking about? We looked at each other in astonishment. She said she needed to buy a caregiving bed and other things, so I've given her about $30,000 so far. The caregiving bed is rented. And we use caregiving insurance, so it doesn't cost that much. Besides, we have savings, so there's no need to borrow money. I see. Where had Rosemary been going, claiming she was caregiving? And what had she been using the money I gave her for? In any case, I helped my mother-in-law with the funeral preparations. There were many things to do such as arranging the funeral and contacting relatives, and time passed by quickly. Of course, I tried to contact Rosemary many times during this period, but her phone seemed to be off, and I couldn't reach her at all. Before I knew it, the day of the funeral had arrived. In the family seating area, it was just my mother-in-law, my son, and me. Many relatives who came asked, where's Rosemary? But I could only give vague answers. Then, just as the priest was about to start the chanting. Sorry, but it looks like I'll be staying at my parents' house for a while longer, to take care of my dad. Rosemary, who hadn't answered any of my calls, called me in a carefree voice. I might not be able to come home for another week. Sorry. Really? My dad's condition is worse than I thought, and I'm worried. I see. It's a shame that I can't spend time with you while you're in the US. That's fine. So, where are you now? I told you, I'm at my parents' house. For what reason? What are you talking about? To take care of my dad, of course. We're at his funeral right now. What? Rosemary was silent for a few seconds, seemingly unable to comprehend the situation. Hey, are you listening? 
Your dad has passed away. No, why? Who have you been taking care of? Um. I'll come right away. Just tell me the location of the funeral. Finally understanding the situation, Rosemary's voice was frantic. Ah, you don't need to come. Why not? It's my dad's funeral. You haven't been reachable at all. So what are you talking about? My phone was broken. I couldn't help it. Just tell me the location. The priest is about to start the chanting, and you'll just be in the way. How can you say that? Fine, I'll ask my mom. Your mom said not to come. No way. Anyway, I'm busy. Bye. Ignoring her as she tried to say something else, I hung up the phone. Actually, I already know where Rosemary is and who she's with. Dad, I saw mom walking arm in arm with a man. Liam told me this when I was frustrated about not being able to reach Rosemary. I saw her last month at the location of my company's new employee training. I was curious and followed them, and they went into a hotel. Liam awkwardly took out his phone and showed me a photo. You've got to be kidding me. I thought she was away taking care of James. Right? I was shocked too. But I didn't want to tell you until I had more evidence. You were thinking about that? Yeah. Working is tough, you know. Since I started my job this year, I've realized how hard you've worked for us. I can't forgive mom for betraying you like this. I was surprised that my son, whom I still thought of as a child, had been thinking about me in this way. You've grown up, Liam. Of course. I'm an adult now. That's true. So, did you find any evidence? Yeah, absolutely. You know I bought mom a new phone with my first paycheck, right? I remembered Rosemary being so happy about it and bragging to me. No way. Yes, way. Mom is terrible with technology, so I set everything up for her. I installed GPS to track her location and set it up so I could see her messages on my computer. You managed to do all that? I'm a programmer at my current job. This was easy. I was impressed by how reliable my son had become. When I saw the evidence he had gathered, I was stunned. Her affair partner is. This guy? And they're on a trip to Hawaii right now. Can you believe it? They're supposed to come back tomorrow, so she might call during the funeral. Just as Liam predicted, Rosemary called in the middle of the funeral. The predictability of the situation made Liam and me exchange looks of exasperation, and I almost burst out laughing, but I held it in, knowing it would be inappropriate. My brother's wife, thinking I was holding back tears, gently said, don't lose heart, which made me feel even more guilty as I nodded silently. After the priest finished the chanting and we were about to close the coffin lid. I'm sorry I'm late. Dad. Suddenly, Rosemary burst into the funeral hall with tears streaming down her face. She immediately clung to her father and began to cry loudly. The relatives who didn't know the situation felt sympathy for her, but my son and I were just exasperated. We let her cry for a while, but Rosemary wouldn't stop and kept clinging to her father. The funeral staff started to look troubled, and the attendees began to murmur. Enough already. It was my mother-in-law. She had been holding back her tears and trying to stay strong to see her husband off. Rosemary, you have no right to cry. What? But dad died. Of course, I'm going to cry. Then where have you been all this time without contacting us? And what's with that outfit? 
well. Despite it being her father's funeral, Rosemary was wearing a bright red dress. Coming straight back from Hawaii, you two didn't have time to change, did you? I glared at the man in the blue Aloha shirt standing near the entrance of the funeral hall. I never thought the affair partner would be my brother, David. All the attendees turned their gaze towards David. Everyone, while Rosemary claimed to be taking care of her dad, she was actually having an affair with my brother. No, it's not true. I just ran into David at the station, and we came here together. Your excuses are pathetic. It's true. Please believe me. He's just making things up. I have proof. What? I held up my phone and showed everyone the photos of the affair, making both of them turn pale. The hotel you always go to is sincerity and pure love near the station. You go there three times a week. And when I'm not around, you even use our bed at home. It's disgusting. Why do you have those photos? These? Liam took them. What? The phone Liam gave you, remember? He set it up so he could track your movements and read your messages. That's horrible. You two tricked me. I can't forgive you. That's my line. While Rosemary and I were arguing, there was a sudden slapping sound from the back of the hall. I looked and saw my brother getting slapped hard by his wife. She even picked up a nearby folding chair and tried to hit him with it, causing people around to rush in and stop her. It was chaos. Taking advantage of the commotion, Rosemary came up to me. Why are you revealing this now? You're ruining my dad's funeral. You're the one to talk? He was my dear dad. Then you should have taken proper care of him. And what did you do with the $30,000 I gave you for caregiving expenses? Stop nagging about such a small amount. You're so petty. You'll pay it back. And I'll be getting alimony too. Alimony? Of course, we're getting divorced. No. I don't want that. I don't want to see your face anymore. It was just a moment of weakness. I wasn't serious. Let's start over. Enough already. With my mother-in-law's sharp rebuke, the room fell silent. Please close the coffin lid. The funeral staff, who were taken aback, hurriedly closed the lid. What should have been a solemn farewell moment turned into a rushed task. I don't want to see your face anymore. At her cold words, Rosemary collapsed to her knees. David too was left staring blankly into space after his wife declared she wanted a divorce. After that, we left the two of them at the funeral hall and headed to the crematorium. Thus, Rosemary and I divorced. Since she had no savings, I didn't ask for alimony, but I did kick her out of the house without any share of the assets. As for my brother David, he paid me $30,000 in alimony in one lump sum. David's wife also demanded alimony from Rosemary. Moreover, David was fired from the company where his wife's father was the president. With nowhere else to go, the two of them started living together, but since they were only interested in a fling, it didn't work out, and they soon separated. Rosemary contacted me once after that. Aren't you lonely being alone now? Let's get back together. I was appalled by her selfishness and felt relieved that I had divorced her. Recently, my son has started living on his own, but he occasionally comes back to share a drink with me. On the monthly anniversary of my father-in-law's death, we visit my mother-in-law together. At 48, I've returned to a carefree single life, and I find it not so bad. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.